Welcome, welcome, welcome in everyone. How's it going tonight? Nelder's in here. Um, let's just take a couple seconds to make sure everything's working. Let's get a basic sanity check and then we'll get right into what's going on tonight. Uh, first test out chat. All right, make sure that populates here. Populates on OBS, fantastic. Everyone hear me out there? I just want to make sure I'm good to go. Things are working. Hey, Rainbow, can you hear me out there really well? I just want to get a thumbs up before I continue on and move right along and get this thing going. Um, uh, turn that down. Boop, boop. All right. Making sure everyone can hear me out there. Perfect. I got the thumbs up. We're going. All right. Well, tonight is going to be a very, um, hopefully not terribly boring night. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, the last couple of weeks were pretty dry. Uh, we were trying to get things ready for the 1.00 release. And I think we are finally ready to actually release 1.0.0. Uh, we are going to have to go through and we're going to have to verify everything. But hopefully that shouldn't take long. And then if we do do that, we get to do the more fun thing, which is uh, put everything to a single button that people can just click and it'll pop up a server for them. So that's that's the game plan. And uh, the way we're going to do that is with Heroku, which I'm going to touch on briefly right now, uh, just to kind of give an overview of what Heroku is and why I'm considering using it and, you know, kind of the pros and cons of it, because it does have some cons. OK, ultimately, AWS is probably the best for an enterprise level environment, but Heroku has a lot of flexibility and it's really, really, really easy to just push things to because it uses a uh, Git remote repositories. Anyway, without getting too deep into this, uh, one of the biggest reasons why I suggest Heroku is they have this concept of a free dyno. Um, this free dyno only has a certain amount of hours. Um, so, I mean, it's not something you would, you would keep live in production by any means, but for just testing you know because a lot of people have been asking me you know after the year of amazon is up like how do i you know how can i develop with this for free and it's it's really hard because then you have to do kind of like a reverse um dns lookup on your own address or you have to do something like free dns and like tie your ip address to it but then your ip isp provider can change your ip address and it gets really hairy and it's not fun so my ultimate goal is to use this first and foremost as a development suite so that way we can uh have something for relatively free just to test with your friends just to you know have you and your friend connect and you can see each other and you can pass messages back and forth just to make sure that everything in the system is working as intended um it just saves a lot of time and effort on that front uh we're going to be learning a lot more about Hero i'm going to be going over how heroku works a lot more in depth as we go through this but i just want to give kind of an overview as to why i'm picking this over everything else uh because it is really really simple uh so this free dyno which is what we're going to be focusing on today um it sleeps after 30 minutes of inactivity uh, and it takes a little bit to turn back on. So it's shared resources. You know, it's not a powerful computer by any stretch of the imagination, but you don't need it for development. You only have a couple of people connecting at a given time. You're also not using it 24 seven. Okay. It uses um, uh, this concept of if your account is verified versus unverified. If you're verified, you get a thousand free dyno hours, which is equivalent of pretty much a month's worth of free hours. So you get the month for free. Um, and then unverified accounts receive 550 hours. So if you're not verified, verified pretty much means you have to throw in a credit card. So if you don't throw in a credit card, you still get 550 hours, but understand that they're a business. They're trying to make money eventually off of you. Um, and I would suggest that their hobby version, which is not crazy expensive, uh, $7 per month is probably cheaper than even like a Linux 
AWS distro and you can do just as much with this. Plus you can also do some cool things with like workers and stuff like that. So for anyone who's not familiar with workers, workers are scripts that you can run, you know, once a day, once an hour, once whenever you need to, to do some process either with your database or with your program or something along those lines. So, uh, something we might use workers for is something like, um, on a daily basis, maybe you want to do like an inventory check of everyone's inventory or variable cleanup or, you know, some database function or some maybe like you want to do like some weird time system and things randomly change in your game. We can use workers to do that. And it, it has it all built in where we're not running cron jobs on Linux to run daily or something like that. It's 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 a little bit more holistic and built into Heroku. Um, it, it's made for this kind of environment. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, and then, yeah, then you can start getting to the standard and the performance and you can start hit scaling horizontally and everything else. And it, it's really cool. And we'll get into Heroku a little bit more later down the road because I have pretty much things hooked up for Heroku to work. I've tested it at a bare bones level, but I haven't really tested everything out. And uh, the, the goal is once we get 1.00 released then we can test the Heroku build. And I essentially want to make it so that uh, newcomers to the RPG and the um, online system can just literally hit deploy to Heroku. They sign up for an account and they're good to go. They can start plugging their their configs into their, into their proper place and they can set it up how they want and go. So uh, I, I think we need to, and we also need to be mindful you know, as a developer, I need to be mindful that people might not want to use Heroku because Heroku can be very limiting. Uh, it does not have servers everywhere in the world. It's primarily the United States. I don't know if they have um, anywhere else. Hold on a second. Let me check this. Uh, Heroku server locations. Uh, regions. Uh, available regions. Oh, no, no. They've they've upgraded. Okay. Uh, private spaces. Yeah, so the common runtime spaces are Europe and the United States. So if you're trying to go anywhere, you know, Asia or anything like that, it can be a little slower, especially when you're doing things like sockets. So these are some of the, the challenges with Heroku. Uh, it's not 100% uh, by any means, but it is... Um, it's a cool way to get something for free for everyone and we can deploy everything to this one thing very quickly. It was either this or doing Docker containers. I am scared to death of doing Socket.io on Socket.io clustering on Docker containers. It's a lot easier on Heroku. So uh, we might do it later on because Docker has its own benefits because then you can really deploy it anywhere, but there's nowhere you can do it for free that I'm aware where it would all kind of just work. Heroku is one of those places where you can just push it for free it works and it's great for just developing. It's great to just get it up there and just test out code and, you know, iterate quickly. So that's that's the game plan with Heroku. All right, now that I've done my diatribe on Heroku, uh, yeah, but, uh, as a developer makes a difference. Uh, Non-Steam version, are you using? Uh, yes, uh, what version of RPG Maker am I using? That is a fantastic question. Um, it's been a while since I've even looked. Oh, what do I got running? I do have it synced to, I am on version 1.5.2 right now with my uh, RPG Maker is what I'm on. So here, uh, throw that in there. Um, I was working on a game that 1.6 kind of blew it away, so I went back to 1.5.2. Uh, we should probably check to make sure. Uh, you want to what? I think that is something we're going to do tonight. I, I was planning on starting a game from scratch anyway. Maybe what I'll do real quick, I'll do it right now. I will update my uh, RPG Maker to the latest because we might as well. Um, because if we update it to the latest, hold on, let me think about this real quick. If we update this to the latest, uh, and we start a new game, it'll pull in all the new files and we should be good. Yeah, 
Yeah, you want to. I think this is. I think this is a very good test because if anything's truly broken, we should know in advance and at least tell people that they need to be on 1.5.2 until we fix it for 1.6 or whatever. So let me let me go on Steam real quick and let me download the latest if I can find it. Uh, what? Why can't I change you? Uh, do I have to close RPG Maker first? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna figure this out. Properties. There we go. All right, one point six point two is the latest. I'm gonna download that as we speak, and then let's kind of go over what we're doing tonight. Okay, so the first uh, thing is we are doing uh, version one release. All right, release, release. Okay, this is going to involve a lot of things. Uh, I'm just gonna do like ABC. And then we're gonna get a two here. And terrible. Um, then we're going to do Heroku. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Gonna bug me. Gonna bug me. Anyway. All right, so. Screw you. Screw you, Google. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just get rid of stuff until we need it. All right, so the version 1.00 release. Uh, the issues here. <sighs> yeah, Rainbow, the, the idea the idea is that we should be able it, I'm going to make it work with 1.6.2, but it also should work with 1.5.2. And, um, I want it to work for everything. Uh, technically, I don't think anything really touches the the core of RPG Maker too much. Like, uh, you know, the game network stuff is all added on top of everything, so that shouldn't touch anything. Um, I, I I'm trying to think of a way that it would interfere. Can't really think of it because I really don't touch that much because a lot of it is like Pixie JS based where they've changed a lot. Um, in between RPG makers, usually they don't touch some of the node stuff, so I'm I'm not concerned. But we should try 1.6 and just see if it works. There's no harm in trying it. Let's try it. Well, actually, there's great harm in trying it, but let's try it. All right, so. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's bring this down here. Ooh, 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 ooh. And this is our project six. And we are going to start a new project. And this will be named project. Uh, you want to what? Let's actually call this something legitimate. So let's call this MV online 1.0 oh point. Okay, apparently it does not like the points. Um, V1. Ooh. Okay, MV online. Uh, yeah, I'll call it V1. All right, I'll put it in my game folder. Awesome. And we're going to start this completely from scratch because uh, I want to also go through the documentation, make sure the documentation is relatively close. I think this is a good refresher course for anyone who doesn't really know how to get it started and how to get rolling. Uh, cause it's been a while for me as well. So th this will be a good refresher course for me and for you. All right. So we got our basic map here. Cool. Cool. We don't need to put anything on it. We are just going to mess around with this. Okay. So first thing first, let's come over here and let's add to our project Add folder. I want to go to documents. I want to go to games. I want to add this. 
Okay. So let's just make sure that this is now RPG Maker 1. Point, how would we even know if it's 1.6 files? There's got to be a way. That's a package.json. That's. Did it always have a package.json? I remember it always. Yeah, RPG Maker 1.6.2. Did we always have a package.json file? Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, cool. All right. Cool, cool. All right. Let's, um, all right, let's go through. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. You want to know what the best way would probably be to look at the documentation and see how off or on it is. Oh, by the way, before we begin, I also updated the uh, branch development 1.000. Uh, you'll notice that it is slightly different structure. I'm just going to go over it really quick. Uh, before I had server and game resources, uh, I got rid of the server folder and put everything at the root level. This was mostly for Heroku deployment. Uh, Heroku needed the package JSON, um, needed the package.json at the root level in order to install things properly and to use things properly. So I figured to just get rid of the server folder and just have a game resources folder right at the root level. So this is how the structure is now. You have the game resources and the server is as soon as you download it. So on MV Online Core documentation, let's kind of run through this. Git clone, it's pretty self-explanatory. NPM install, actually this is technically wrong. Normally before you would have to go into server and then run NPM install. So actually this is, this is correct as it stands right now. Uh, after configuring the server, npm start to start the server. Server configuration. Uh, inside the server configurations config.js folder. Okay, so we gotta update. Update readme. Okay. Ah. All right, so we have to update the main readme. Port JWC secret first hash mail from uh, the other thing that I want to do is introduce these concept of process variables uh, because there is a way to do it in Heroku where you can push all these naturally. I actually think there's a way to set a default for these things, which is once again why I want to do Heroku and make a one click all button, but that's neither here nor there. Um, JWT secret mail from Mongo Connect. Uh, the MongoDB we're still gonna have to do manually-ish, where you're gonna have to sign up for an MLab account or something along those lines. Um, yeah, it's just, it's the way it is. I don't think Heroku has any sort of offering for Mongo. I can think of. No, no they don't. So Mongo is still, you have to have your own or have a service or something. Um, I mean, we could always, I've always been mildly agnostic to where you put your data. So, I mean, technically you could put it into Postgres. You could put it wherever you want, as long as you're saving it and taking it back relatively the same way. I don't know how Passport will work with something like Postgres or MySQL. Yeah, it is possible to change it from um, Mongo to MySQL in total honesty. Um, I would go Postgres just because it has a little bit better uh, JSON object uh, fields and it's a little bit more enterprise ready. Um, honestly, if somebody wanted to develop for that, uh, the way that I always did it was I made a new collection for each thing. I mean, you could technically have two database connections and just put data that you want for one thing over here and data that you want for another thing over here. So if you want to use Mongo and MySQL, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I just happen to use Mongo. I like Mongo. It's easy. Um, you can kind of just store data. It doesn't have to be uh, particular um, columns and stuff like that. You don't have to deal with uh, nearly as messy joins. Uh, although you... You do have to kind of do joins and it's not joins in Mongo. It's a little bit more references. Uh, so there's ways to get it done, but yeah. Yeah, you could argue different ways.
Connect feature requests in Discord recently. I'll look at feature requests in Discord in a little bit. I'm more concerned about getting the base out, making sure everything works. I've I've actually been getting a lot of um a lot of people have been coming to me saying that network players somehow doesn't work. And I think it's because I screwed something up with some sort of commit somewhere. I've been working on a private branch and uh the public branch at the same time and i think one kind of overwrote the other so i really 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 want to get this 1.00 release out so that way we're all on the same page it all works for everybody and we're not fighting upstream uh for all this other stuff uh you know make sure network players work make sure chat works make sure you know all the things that i've built that i know work i want to make sure they work and then once we've verified that everything works, we get a fresh project up and running, then we can move on to Heroku. So that way everyone can just one click, get it going and we're good to go. And then we'll start focusing on new features. Then we can really sit down and have a solid foundation. Everyone's on the same page and we can move forward. So that's the, that's the game plan. All right, so client configuration, CSS folder, root, and we wanna add some stuff. Okay, this I am going to add directly from project six. So what I mean by this, so this is referring to right here, uh, client configuration. Uh, we want to we want to add a CSS folder and add a few things from the CSS folder and in the game resources JS plugins file, which I am going to do directly from. Uh, you want to what? I should just add directly from here because I want to make sure the this is up to date. So okay, so let's. Um, let me think about this. Give me a second, guys. Talking and doing things at the same time is not my strong suit. Uh, this in the header. And the header, just make sure that this is index on MV version one. And this in the body. And this domain name I'm gonna change. Okay, so yeah, this is something I wanna change. So update main readme, uh, server folder, and uh, socket. Okay. Yeah, socket, the socket IO reference that I'm talking about is this right here. Oh no, 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 this is actually correct. Ooh, that is actually correct. Okay. No, no, we fixed that. Wow. Can we fix that? I'm just going to nod my head and go with it. Oh. All right. So now we need to actually copy all these library folders out. So let's see if we already have them within the project. So this is MV online, which is the actual server. In game resources, uh, we want to copy the entire CSS folder. I'm, whoa, 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 whoa. I forget if I can just copy from this or not. Hold on. Copy. Let's see if we can just Paste this over here, paste. Yeah, all right, cool. That's easy. Uh, so let's copy this. Crypto. Um, I don't think I need crypto. Crypto was for something else that I was doing. Let's copy these. For all the jQuery, the socket IO stuff. Come over to JS libs. East. Oh, cool. Rid of that, rid of this, rid of this. Get rid of you. Uh, let's just make sure these names are adding up here. So socket IO 2.2.0, yep. Uh, crypto, we don't need. Or wait a minute, do we need crypto? No, because crypto I pulled from here. Oh, I do need crypto. Hmm. So we'll copy that. Bring that over here. Oh, cool. Uh, and let's add this back in. Where did I add crypto, crypto, crypto? Yeah, I do need crypto. 
Why do I need crypto? Oh, right, right. I hash it for one time before I even sent it to the server. Right, I forgot about that. Never mind. I lied. Making sure you guys can see me, hear me. Yeah, we're still good. All right. Um, let's. All right, so we got this, we got that, we got that. Um, we already have this. Now, because I switched everything over to environmental variables, I really don't have to touch this. Um, yes, because I have all of my stuff up and in and wonderful. I should just be able to just do a node mon server. That should just work. Start on port 8000. I have all these workers. Um, yeah, hold on. Hold on. Let me, uh, I'm just going to put down the workers a little bit. Uh, shit. What was it? Was it? Ah, shit, I forget what this was. Was it workers? I might have to look at the code really quick. No, that doesn't seem right. Ah, crap. Ah. Worker count option dot workers. Server port option, so okay. Server port, you want to know what? See it, I see it, I see it. There we go. So now I should see four. There we go. One, two, three, four. That's what I want to see. Okay, so I'm just throttling the workers that way we don't, um, I don't mess with the stream too much. Uh, random question. What made you start this project? Um, <laughs> so, uh, I started this project, uh, many moons ago. I started this project well over a couple of years ago and I did it more as a curiosity. Um, I did it because it interested me. Uh, I remember trying to start to do this in Ruby with RPG Maker VX Ace. Um, back then, there was a project for not Ace, but I want to say VX, uh, Team Vlad, that came out with Ruby and this online system where it was like all MySQL based and it was not real time. <laughs> It was terrible. It was absolutely garbage to set up. But the thought of RPG Maker and internet connectivity just piqued my interest. Okay. I knew it was never going to be perfect, but I really just wanted it. I was just like, I want to do this. Uh, and actually in the pursuit of learning Node, uh, so that's what got me started into Node, which I... I was not a programmer when I learned how to do all this. Um, and then I learned from this and now I have a job as a programmer because I like doing, I love the process of learning how to do this more than actually making the games for it. Uh, <laughs> so that is my long about way of how I started this project out of a curiosity because it's because it, it was fun. That's why I started it. And now you know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. Okay. Workers. 
throttled the workers. Good to go. Um, all right, now we need to add. Now we need to add the core to the game. Uh, so now I don't believe I have this in here. CSS folder. I already added the CSS folder uh, in the files, game resources, JS plugins to your own JS plugins. So I missed a step. So here we go. So if I come in here, I go to game resources and this will be a really good test because I have not uh, in my project six, I had really updated versions of everything. So this is actually kind of nice to try this. So go into the plugins. We are going to copy everything. So I'm just going to gift copy. We're going to go into plugins paste. All right, you want what? Let's let me back out of it. Ah. Let's get rid of whatever is on this by default. And I always, it's been a long time since I made one from scratch, folks. So let's delete, delete. And let's start off with just the main core. Okay. Online main core. We're going to keep the hash the same and we're going to just point to localhost right now. Uh, yes. And let's do login core as well, because I already have everything hooked up. This should just work. Force locking on startup. That's fine. Socket IO connection. First shutdown, second shutdown. Yeah, that's all fine and good. All right. So yeah, the first, Ooh, I just realized we're going to have to look into that. Okay, I did notice something. I, yeah, let me show you what I was saying. So I noticed that the font awesome stuff is not coming in and I'm not quite sure why. Um, yeah, let me just, oh, uh, what is this? F9, F8, F7, Jesus. File not found, the web font. Yeah, this is not good. Something's up with font awesome. I gotta fix that. Uh, so let's put that on the list of things I need to fix. Uh, where do I have my notes here? This is why it's good to every once in a while just um, redo kind of, you know, go from basic, cause you forget how much you fix, uh, just kind of knowing what you're doing. Uh, so I'm going to keep it broken for right now because we'll we'll fix it together in a little bit. I'm more concerned about functionality at this point because there's a lot of things we need to test. We need to test uh, network players. We need to test chat. We need to test. Let's get everything tested and then we'll come back to this. So connect. Working and we're in. Perfect. All right. So let's move on to bigger and better things. Um, one of the big things that I've been wrestling with is how do I want to... If, if I make it a one click button for people to deploy, do I want everything enabled? Do I want everything disabled? Like I currently have it. Um, and honestly, I never came up with a really good answer. Um, I, I would rather have people enable it just because it's, um, it forces you to learn something about how it works. Uh, it, it's not necessarily to stop you. It's just to, you know, th this is not a magical machine that just runs itself. It's not just going to magically run itself. You need to tell it what to do for your game. Um, and if I just automatically enable everything, I'm concerned that people are going to leave themselves open to security flaws. Um, if a security flaw is found and they don't know how to run their own system, they don't know how to disable things. It could just very easily get bad. Um, so conscientiously, I want to keep everything disabled and you manually enable things. But I'm really thinking about going against that for especially the Heroku deploy. 
Um, I'm thinking of enabling everything and then you can disable what you want, which would be a nice little paradigm shift for a lot of people who have, who have struggled, um, getting this thing going, but it's an honest discussion I want to have and feel free to put your comments, uh, on which way you would like to go with it. Cause most people would probably be fine with just everything enabled and then they can disable what they want. But there are some, there are some security implications that we, we could discuss if you want to. All right. Um, so with that, let's add things to the server. The first thing that we want to add. So once again, let's test, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. all right, let's close a bunch of these out. Get a bunch of stuff open. Oh, that's a stupid thing in the background. All right, so server.js. Let's look at, um, let's look at the readme's. This will be a good chance for the readme's just to double check that they work well. Uh, let's go to net players. Okay. Add uh, here. Like, can we see it in? Ah. I don't have a preview for it. Okay. So add this to the socket IO modules. So we can do this. Do the socket IO modules, socket IO modules, socket IO modules. Okay. And then I believe, whoa, 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 whoa. And here, add this. I know exactly what to do. I just want to make sure that this is still up to date. All right. So we added net players there. We also, does it say to add net players on your local? It doesn't. <laughs> All right. So we should update documentation. Once again, it's not wrong. It's just incomplete, uh, but we'll put it in our notes. Update. Uh. Okay. So here we are going to add login core. Now we're going to add uh, network players. Network map ID, player event ID. Ooh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Uh, apply, okay. Right, 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 right. So event one, there, there. Ooh, I forget what you have to set the frequency and speed to. We'll just keep it like this for now. I'm not too concerned. I'm Once again, I'm more concerned about functionality more than I am all the nitty gritty things to make it 100%. Um, all right, so this, oh, what was the Python thing again? Hold on, hold on. Yeah, simple HTTP server. There we go. Uh, we don't want to do port 8000. Give me a second, folks. Uno momento, por favor. Uh, let's put this on port 3000. Perfect. Okay, so now I should be able to go to localhost 3000. Huzzah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, um, freaking cores. I can tell you already. Well, at least now I figured it out pretty quick. Uh, 404 XML, no access control origin. I know we have a core. I was looking at it today. We have a cores uh, plugin. I got to read up exactly how to use it again because it's, it's bugging me. 
it's bugging me that I don't know my own system and how to use that part of it. So issues. Um, course. That is not it. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to hardwire this in right now. Once again, this is a security issue, which is why I can't just put it in every single time. But that to do it. Okay. I come over here. Reload. That file not found is fine. That has to do with the font awesome. Oh. Now let's put it here. Let's try that again. Oh, son of a, every time, every time, it's always something with cores. This tripped me up every single time. Killing me, bro. Killing me. All right. So we move around here. Uh, I have the game already. Yeah. Go around here. Yeah. It looks like it's working. Cool. Network players is working. Awesome. I love when things decide to work right off the bat. Already already a couple things down, man. Already a couple things down. Things are working. Awesome. Hey, the more things that work quickly, the quicker we can move along. The quicker we can get to maybe Heroku deployment tonight. Should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm kind of sick of... Uh, this low level stuff that we have to get done, but it's, it's drudgery. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. Um, okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Let's, um, close that out. Uh, next on the list, let's do chat. So here, let's do chat. Let's add chat here. And this is what I was talking about by adding everything by default. Uh, I say, I don't know, the more I think about it, the more I just want to enable everything. And then you add what you want to add. And maybe we'll do like some sort of environmental variable where you can like disable things manually. No, I'll keep thinking about it. Because they are on technically different namespaces. It's not really that big of a deal that they're there, but you know, it's just, it's, yeah. What's down here? Oh, right, you can't hit F1 on this. Um, oh, wait a minute, can you hit it now? Nope. Oh, so I gotta open this thing manually. Ah, uh, goodness gracious. This will open. Huh? What the heck? What is this put to? Oh, you want what helps? You want what helps, ladies and gentlemen? Adding it. Your system. 112, what is 112? F F1, yeah, it's F1. Okay, so apply. I'm gonna open this. Bring this down so you can see it. Cool, cool. And if I hit, uh, let's restart this. Oh, sweet. You can see it, you can see it. I should probably make sure that I can sign into another name. I don't know if I 
have another easy name. Yeah, I do. Okay. I just want to make sure it works pretty pretty. Uh, I should also consider doing some sort of like um, cash for this. Would be smart. Ooh, that's not good. Uh, Eight. A pen child of no, this is RPG maker. Show. Online chat 195. Oh, so let's look in here. Oh. Yeah. Uh, scene manager dot scene uh, is not equal to, ooh, this is why you don't do this right off the top of your head. I think that'll do it. Pretty sure. Don't quote me on this. Right, and if I send something, it's not a big deal. And we're good to go. Whoa, 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 whoa. And nothing's working. Hmm. Hmm. Is anything working? I'm receiving. <laughs> Two players connected, this, this. I have a feeling this is wrong. We're getting from the server. Hold on, let me think about this. Uh, hold on. Let's do this. I think this might be a little bit better of a way to do it. I'll explain my reasoning behind all of this. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, so now if we go into here and we send this here, this does not crash and we still see everything perfectly fine. There we go. Okay, so the reason why that was happening, just so we're all clear on that, um, it was erroring out because when you're in the menu, the chat window is not there. The uh, chat in general is just not there. So document get element by ID text area. Uh, text area is only yeah in the scene map. So that is what was going on with that. I kind of knew it just because I wrote this. So I kind of had an idea what was going on. So I was trying to originally say if not in um, I was trying to say if not in scene map, but I think this is probably the more succinct way of doing it anyway where it's like hey if the chat if the chat does not exist don't append to it and that way and technically we should do this as well this does not hurt all right so really quick i am going to copy this and we are going to put this into game resources plugins what is this online chat okay 
And really quick up here, we are going to do uh, this, that. We'll update the version on this so that way everyone knows what's going on. Um, a fix for refreshing while in menu. Cool. Cool. So that way we can push that off to everybody else. Nice, nice. All right. Uh, so chat is working. Awesome. Uh, so far, so good, folks, on 1.6. So this shouldn't matter between 1.5, 1.6. Um, let's see what else we got on the list. I don't want to, if, if we got the main majority features going, I might just kind of do the rest on my own. Um, what do we got? So online chat. Let's close these. So we got online chat. Uh, where's a good place to start? Oh, all right, all right. So we got chat. Oh, we got cores over here as well. Hmm. I should really read into that. I'll do that. I'll do that on my own time. I don't want to bore you guys with that. Uh, global variables. I will save for later. Um, metrics. I'm going to save for later because that's just a data dump. We can do that anytime. Uh, net players and chat were the two big ones cloud save i'm gonna wait because that could be a can of worms i don't want to touch right now um all right let's do global variables yeah let's do global variables how am i gonna do this all right so um and like i said i'm gonna add a bunch of things to this um Yeah. Yeah. All right. So global var. Let us add global var over here. Uh, online global vars. Uh, switch threshold. I forget what this. Anything below and including 100 is a global switch. Any above is a normal switch. Okay, so let's make switch one. Uh, let's make this a chest. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, shit. That's coming off screen for me because I have two screens and RPG Maker's weird with two screens. Um, Uh, very Hold on. It's been a while since I've had to do this. Okay. Uh, and then we are going to roll variables. We're going to say variable one. We're going to name it uh, global one. And we are going to add 10 every single time you touch this chest. Uh, so variable one is now. Uh, okay, so. There we go. Okay. It's a good way of doing it. Okay. So we'll reset that. Reset this. All right. So if my calculations are correct, to be able to all go in here, good to go. If I click on this variable one is now zero, variable one is now 10. If I come over here, Variable one is now 10, variable now is now 20. And I come back over here, it should be 20 and 30. 20, 30, 40, 50, or 30, 40, 30, 40, and 40, 50. Cool, goal variables work, huzzah. 
Um, I mean, we're kind of blowing through these. It's oh wow, it's nine o'clock already. Shit, <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Okay, what else is on the list? Just so I know for the future. Okay, so I still need to test. Uh. Uh, cloud safe. Uh, cloud save. Metrics. Cloud save metrics. Uh, this is one that I am going to have to, this is one I'm concerned about. Cloud save is one that I'm worried about. That is the one thing that might have an effect for 1.6. Uh, I also have a couple things I need to update on cloud save regardless. So the cloud save is just a bigger project in and of itself. So not absolutely mandatory, mandatory for 1.00. It'll still work as is, but I will test that on my own time. All right. Ooh. Yeah, I just thought of another thing. Uh, that's not going to work. So what I'm thinking about is the enforce one user logic. Right now you can, there's a config. Uh, there's config for enforce one user. Uh, and it allows only one logged in user at a time. Uh, and I can guarantee you it's going to be broken for right this second. Uh, you want to what? That'll work for right now. I can guarantee it'll work. Uh, guarantee it'll work. Yeah. I don't know how that works with me. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, there we go. Yeah, socket.user is the actual token now. So socket.user.name should be right. And this logged in user. Yeah, it's a. It's a variable put up top. It's a global variable. All right, this should work. This should work. At least that way, it's uh, good to go. Uh, in fact, I can test it real quick. Give me a sec. So if we go to configurations and we turn this sucker to true, let the thing reset. Reload. Uh, reload over here. Connect to Z. Connect to Z. Uh, they're both disconnected. This is actually good. It's actually what we want. Because now you won't see each other move. Yep, perfect. This is exactly the functionality. Um, and I explained this in my video on what I did with this. It's technically supposed to run uh, events. Uh, and I believe it's done in the login core. Yeah, we just saw it. Yeah, switch on first shutdown and second shutdown. So you can make events based off of the first person who signed in, the second person who signed in. So you can reset their game. You can make them go back to login. You can do whatever you want based on your game. Uh, the best thing for me was to just restart the game. Like just hard restart if you if you got stuck in uh, a login state. But that's neither here nor there. Um... Right, let's reload. Um, set it to false because I want it false by default. But I just wanted to make sure it worked real quick because that was quick and easy to test. Uh, so we don't need to double check that now. So we can take it off our notes. All right, so we just need to do cloud save and metrics. Um, You want know to, can I do cloud save? You want know to, let, let's try to do this really, really quick. I, I think we can do this quickly. Um, hopefully we can. Uh, 
right, it's an API. It's not even a socket. All right. Uh, API, 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 API. Uh, is it authentication? Yeah, it's authentication required. And I can already tell you this. Oh, maybe. Oh, no, actually, I think this is correct. Yeah, no, 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 no. All right, so I did update this. Wow. Cool. Uh, this might actually just work right out of the box. Hold on. This is actually kind of nice. I'm surprised that everything is working so well. <laughs> it's almost as if I built it decent. Hmm. Nah, nah, probably not. Are you using the non-Steam version of RMMV? Doesn't matter. Uh, no, as far as I'm aware, Felipe, it does not matter uh, whether it's the Steam version or the non-Steam version. They're both RPG Maker MV. So as long as it works, it works. It shouldn't matter. Uh, the IE version, that's not what you're asking. Okay. Uh, where was I? I was testing out cloud save. I forget if I have to set anything up. Uh, cloud save, cloud save, cloud save, cloud save. Nope. I really should make documentation for that. Okay. Um, act. Ooh, 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 that was ugly. I'd save forty. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Express depreciated request params name user request param. Hold on, hold on, hold on. West Param name. Where else is this used? I've lost myself here. I'd say failed. Internal server error. What the hell's going on? 736. What the hell's going on? ZZ connect. Uncaught type system of null. Online cloud 40. Okay. I also once again changed a lot. So once again, we'll we'll take a quick gander at this. All right, let's close all this. Yes. Plugins online cloud save 40. 40. Correct save contents. Now what was the exact error? System of null. Uh all right so this is one of those instances where it might actually make a difference and this might be interesting okay rpg maker so here 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 Load. Or 
server cloud save. Yeah, but there's no system here, so it's saying system of un of null. Hold on, we're gonna just test something out really quick. I just wanna give this one stab. We might have to come back to cloud save. Yeah, there's no data coming back from this. All right, something's funky with this. Uh, that's odd. Okay, so there's definitely something with Cloud Save and the new version of MV Online, which I kind of expected, to be honest. That this was the only one where I was kind of a little concerned about. So we'll come back to this. Right now, we can't use Cloud Save. Womp. Um, is it suck? Yes, but it's not the end of the world. So, so we don't need to do this. Uh, that in red that way we all know it is not working cool all right well that kind of sucks but let's um let's deal with that so let's take cloud save off of here that way it's not part of the build is there anything else on the list that we should concern ourselves with um read me Chat, cloud save cores, global metrics, and netplayer. Uh, metrics. Metrics we can check really quick. Metrics is probably the easiest of them all, uh, only because. Uh -oh. Not there. Uh, probably no authentication required. Uh, Metrics is just a really simple data dump. I mean, there's there's nothing to it. It's just it's just whatever data you feel like put into the database is just it gets put there. Um, metrics. Yeah, so we could just send something like this: anonymous equals true. And so if we just want to plugin command, you can't see this, but I put that in. Uh, let's actually change this. Test. Just to make sure it goes through. I might have to check it afterwards, but... Tell me clouds they failed. Um, don't see. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Username, duplicate, error key. Wow, 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 wow. Oh boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, Kidoki. Index unique true where the username has to be unique, if not anonymous, but I am doing it anonymously, which shouldn't matter.
Should not matter. Anonymous true. It should not matter. <sighs> this is disturbing. I might have to look into this. Something's up with this. Should just be able to do that. Request that body, save count, playtime, ID. This ID. <laughs> no, 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 we should be checking if anonymous. So this should be down here. Well. Um. All right, let's try that. I think it's because we're trying to put in a, uh, the same ID. If not anonymous, anonymous equals true. And then anonymous should equal true over here. Anonymous equals true. Interesting, really weird. I want to try not anonymous and see if that actually works. Because I can live with that. That's weird. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so let's put this to false real quick. If not, we'll move on real quick. I don't want to spend all night on this. Because something's funky. And I don't want to spend too long on it. Okay, so change both of these to false. If this place nicer. Oh God, I got to take that off. Yeah, that works just fine. Weird. Yeah, so the data dump works for not anonymous. Okay. Anonymous. Uh, metric dumps. That is not terrible, folks. It's actually pretty good. Okay, so um, if you make them non-anonymous, they work just fine. So... Interesting. Very interesting. I think it has to do with making these unique in the database. I'll look into why that's happening. It should just create uh, an ID on its own, which is independent of everything. So I don't know why this is happening, but neither here nor there. Um, and I think I might change this to this. We'll we'll talk about this and kind of put this all into one and then just not require this because right now it's required. There's no need to require it. Yeah, we'll go into that later. All right. Take a couple minutes stretch. Oh, no. 
Alright. Let me get all in here and relaxed. Because now comes the second part of our fun adventure. Now we get into Heroku and what we can do with Heroku. And let's see if it just works, which would be nice. Uh, so first thing, let's close out everything. Uh, and we can keep this open because I want to keep that open. Let's um, get rid of that. Close that. All right, let's take a look at, let me close all these windows. Okay. Close the windows, let's close the workspaces, okay? So MV Online V1 is my game project. MV Online is the actual server, okay? There's a couple little things that we had to change for Heroku to work. Uh, I'm just gonna go over them really quick. You don't need to know this. Uh, this is more just for informational purposes, okay? Uh, one of the things we had to do is in the package.json, we had to put an engine for Heroku to know what we're using as an engine. Okay, and here we use node 10.x. Actually, I want to know what engines it supports. Uh, oh, node. Node.js support. Node.js runtimes. Minor major patch. Uh, it's all the way up to 12. I don't know, it goes to 11.x. Why not? Let's go 11.x. Let's make this nice and stable. We can always go back down to 10 if it doesn't work. Okay. The other thing. Yep, we added this main server.js, which is fine. So npm start, this is where it goes to. Um, there is also this concept of a proc file. So this tells it to run node on server slash server js and right now it's going to be server.js so i'm glad i went into the proc file proc file is specific to heroku only but you can do really cool things within this proc file like you can add workers and schedulers and all sorts of cool things i am not the expert when it comes to proc files you can read up on heroku proc files uh proc file uh, process type, web, worker, urgent worker, clock, a command type, web bundle, executive rails. So each, so you can do more than just node web servers with Heroku. They could do PHP, Ruby, all sorts of things. So it's, it's very, very dynamic. Heroku is a really nice resource. Um, okay. So this is the proc file. That's what it's there for. Um, There is one other thing that I set up beforehand that I kind of want to go over. Um, in the server, it's actually in the config. Um, in the config, I did the Redis connection. Uh, I set up a separate, technically Redis is a separate database uh, and we need, right now I have it on my local computer, which is how I've been testing it. But with Heroku, we're going to need it somewhere, somehow. Now, I just found out right before this that Heroku actually has something built in, which is would be really cool if we could use that for free. Um, but if not, Redis Labs is what I have it in right now. So Redis Labs uh, has a free 30 megabyte, 30 connections, 30 concurrent connections for free. So concurrent connections are server to the Redis store. So you can have 30 servers using it at once with 30 megabytes and 30 megabytes doesn't sound like a lot, but this is a very low level key value pair. I mean, you are doing like rooms to socket IO IDs. Like it's, it's really, really small stuff. You have to do thousands upon thousands upon thousands to, to reach 30 meg. Um, so, I mean, this it's as literal as get started, sign up and go, you know, free. And it just, it, tells you here. I mean, I can log in and kind of show you. Or not. Or not. Log in. 
yeah so i have my mv online test i can go into my configuration it gives me my endpoint which gives me my host so there's three things we need here the host the port and the password so this is the host this is the port and then the password is right down here which i am not going to click on because i don't want you seeing my password but that's how you get it um but i did find out that heroku actually has um redis built in so redis add on uh they have a free hobby dev interesting i wonder how to add it to node uh connecting in node.js oh oh you just put the redis url Hmm. We could really make this one click. And you just have to set up the um the Mongo server. It's pretty nice. And how much was it again? I think it was like 25 megs and 20 connections or something like that. I'll fiddle around with this. Let's get it up and running first on Heroku. And then we could do this. Okay, so we kind of went over pricing of Heroku. Uh, they have like a free, uh, I didn't go into the next level up, which is interesting. Uh, hobby, which is like never sleeps, free SSL, kind of, you know, it's it's nice, it's powerful, but it's not too powerful. It's just, it gets the job done at Hobby. But once again, free is what we're looking for right this second, it's development. It allows us to just test things real quick. Uh, I'm thinking of upgrading to Hobby um for a little bit just so you guys can play around with it um because my game plan after we get this up and running tonight is maybe publish what i have here so you guys can see how this works you guys can interact with each other that kind of thing uh but we'll we'll get there when the time comes uh so for right now i already have one up and running uh which is this Nelderson MV online test. Okay. And this is where I was telling you these config files and the settings. This is where you can set up, um, you know, MV Redis host, MV Redis port. You can set up, uh, you know, MV Mongo. You can set up all of these environmental variables right here. It gives you like a key value. The key is this environmental variable. The value is something like this okay and that way heroku handles all of that you only have to type it in once you don't have to type it in here uh, it's a lot more secure uh, and that's pretty much that uh, and if we can get redis to just work with heroku that'd be even better because you wouldn't even have to worry about that um One second, hold on a second. Process environment port is important as well. Just so I'm not rambling on to myself. Yeah, yeah, I already did. Okay, so the config port, but then there's also process environment port. Okay, yeah, I need to, ooh, that's something we need to write down. Um, uh, document all uh, environment variables. Okay. All right. So I think we are at a good point to see what we have and to at least, um, we're gonna commit everything that we have to the branch because i think right now we're at a good point where we're going to uh actually commit to heroku so heroku works almost exactly like github uh it, it's actually a git remote origin so you you push it to it just like you would to a commit branch 
or a, or to a branch and it just pushes it it's fantastic it works beautifully uh so proc file just make sure all this looks right that's fine that's fine uh i am going to keep this on for right now yeah i'm going to keep it on for testing purposes right now yeah i'll keep it on uh, metrics yeah so i'm going to keep metrics net players chat and global var completely on it's been changed find metrics we're going to put anonymous to false so that's fine change that up real quick that's not a big deal and online chat we just fixed a couple little bugs just to make sure that we're good cool all right uh, and we changed, uh, uh, so this was a fix for online chat. Um, deploy. All right, we're going to. Push that to development 1.000. Oh, oh. I push. Push, 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 push. Cool. All right. I'm just doing a sanity check, guys. Can you guys still hear me out there? All right. While you answer me. Uh, all right, let's go with All right, so now one of the cool things about Heroku is you just add it as a remote Repository So the way to do this deploy uh, I've already done my Heroku login. I'm already logged in Okay, I've already you already we already have the clone uh, this Oh, no, 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 connect to GitHub. No, 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 shit. There's a way to do this easier. Add Heroku remote. This is what we want. So we are gonna come over to here. We're gonna add the Git remote and we are going to take our, our app name, which is this. So right here, it's telling me to clone from Heroku, the Git, which would add the remote, but we already have the GitHub up and running. So we are just Heroku Git remote. So we're adding the Heroku uh, we're, we're, what the remote is doing is it's allowing us to say, hey, we want to, when we push to Heroku, we want to push to this, to this app is essentially what we're saying. Okay, very cool. So now all I have to do, so I made my commit. I already pushed to master. Okay, so now I want to push to Heroku's master. And I just realized we are pushing from a feature branch into the master. So it's it, it's really easy to push to master if you're already on master. So the way to do that, just, just to make, just to show you guys how this works, get push. And normally you would do origin master, right? Which would point to GitHub. GitHub is the origin because that's where you got the Git repository from. However, we want to push to Heroku master now if we did this it would push the master branch to the master branch of heroku however we want to push from the development branch to master on heroku and i'm pretty sure i know how to do this but i want to double check
your branch master. Okay. So we want to do this. So we want to push uh, development, development. I'm just going to copy it directly from here. I have uh, Git cracking off the screen that gives me the exact branch name. So that way I am not fiddling around in here. So development 1.0.0. And then colon, and we're going to push to master. Errors, all the errors. Okay, so what I had to do there was do a dash F, which essentially forces the update. Sometimes Heroku is too smart for its own good, and if it detects too much of a change, it just won't let you do it. Uh, but for our purposes, we want to do it. Uh, and this should be relatively quick because we have such a small application. Okay, uh, as we get bigger, or as, if you want to so this is another important issue. Okay, so you can do your game through Heroku. But there is a huge caveat. Okay. Heroku does not go over 500 megabytes. Period. Okay. Um, just something to keep in mind. It's really, really useful because it just, you can push whatever you want to it. It's fantastic. GitHub, you can actually save your game to. After about a gigabyte or two, they start to look at you like, hey, please don't do that. Um, but they're usually pretty cool with letting you store stuff on GitHub. Um, under a gigabyte, especially. But Heroku is pretty strict with 500 megabytes. Anything above 500 megabytes, it just won't let you do it. So it's kind of a meh, but once again, if you're just doing it for the socket IO stuff, it's 22 megs or something ridiculous. Like uh, how much is that? Yeah. 22 megs. So it's, it's plenty small. It's just, you know, just keep that in mind. All right. So now we have it up and running. So now if we come over to here, um, we can open the app and now right here, is our application. So you're seeing this this return, which is actually the default that I have to just return when you hit the root. Uh, so I think it's example test. I have something. Uh, spelling it correctly helps. Yeah, success false message not authenticated. So this is actually running and working. So now I can do this. If I come in here, Change the online main core. Uh, the other cool thing is I don't have to worry about uh, this 8,000 port anymore because Heroku by default goes to port 80, which is nice. Because uh, normally node on port 80 is a pain in the butt and has a lot of security implications because uh, usually you have to run in sudo and there's a whole bunch of uh, pain in the assery with it. But Heroku deals with all that crap, so it's nice. So now I should be able to run. And we should be able to connect. Uh, let me get cloud save off of that sucker. Ooh. WebSocket is failing though. Well, that's not good. All right, so now we need to figure out why WebSocket is failing. So this is the fun part. Uh, let's take off cloud save. Let's turn you off. I'm sick of looking at that message. All right. The one thing that we didn't take into account is we added a lot of stuff to, I added a lot of stuff to Heroku since last time. So let's look at uh, Heroku. And uh, socket IO. Node server install. 
Well, we already have all this. No, no, we're not doing it like that. Socket IO. Option two, socket IO. Here we go, here we go, here we go. That's fine. We already have all this stuff. Already have all this stuff. Handle connections. That's fine. Broadcast updates. That's fine. Start the app. Apps using Socket.io should enable session affinity. If you plan to use Node's cluster module or to scale your app to multiple dynos. Oh. So we just hit this. Oh. Cool. Let's see if that worked. That'd be nice if that's all it was. Uh, let's bring up this. Mm, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Work. Question ID, I know, unknown. Where the hell is that coming from? this headers what am I doing here where are we sending this token all right so we're doing a post so this has nothing to do with socket IO what is failing here the session affinity that's not a big deal token No, this d definitely is socket IO upgrade. It's gotta be. Map JSON login. Post OK. Two hundred. Hmm. What is going on here? All right, let's take off this transport. Yeah, I th I've I've seen this in the past. That's why I think I know what it is. Do this. Let's do. Um. Access, access token. It's query, that's IO connect. All right, hold on, hold on. All right, so query. Ah, uh, what is it? Uh, not the WebSocket transport only. There we go. Because normally, you can do this. Connect, IO connect. And let's do secure true.
Uh, well, that looks a lot better. So now if we go to all, Now we run this, and this is running a 101 switching protocols. This is a good sign. Yeah, and this has to do with polling. So if we come back in here and we add polling to this, polling is where it gets a little strange. Um, and I'm going to try to explain this as best as humanly possible. Um, let me see if this goes nuts. Just give me a second. Oh, that's not so bad. What if we uh, invert it? Could have just been the secure true. The secure true has to do with HTTPS uh, because Heroku does HTTPS by default. Let's try that. Oh yeah, you can see it. You can see it failing a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, it's just failing like crazy. All right, so let's invert it, and let's just do that. So it seems to work really well inverted. Perfect. WebSocket switching protocols. So the reason why this does this, OK? Um, yeah, on reconnection, reset the transport options, as the WebSocket connection may have failed, uh, caused by proxy firewall. Oh, that's pretty cool. So on reconnection attempt, you can do polling. It's interesting. Um, the reason why this is uh, has to do with socket IO backs up to uh, XHR polling and AJAX requests if you can't do web sockets uh, for whatever reason. Uh, the problem is you should be able to do web sockets 99.999% of the time. So there's not really a need for it, but it doesn't get 100% of all use cases. Uh, for us and for what we're doing, this is perfectly fine. Uh, so it'll try to connect to WebSocket first, then it'll go over to polling. Uh, this is something I've seen before where Heroku just has a problem with polling and just Socket.io in general. Uh, it's still, I've seen it in production level environments. It works perfectly fine. like this with thousands of users so I'm not concerned one little bit I was just hoping it would just work <laughs> but I have seen this before this isn't this isn't something I haven't seen before so this is perfectly fine this is normal um, and this looks like it will work just fine so if I come over here we still got our other server running for local those 3000 once again this is now pointed to Roku and it is working just fine on both pretty cool all right all right I, th I think we're getting there guys so we got everything pointed to Heroku as you saw we deployed to Heroku pretty quickly uh, I did not set anything up because I already had my environmental variables set up um, but it would be nice to have people's environmental variables set up relatively for them beforehand um, they wouldn't be able to log in right away, so that's something that would have to still be done manually with uh, Mongo. Let's see what uh, Heroku has for um, add-ons. Do they have Mongo? I would be surprised. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Are you serious? Fucking cool. All right, so they have MLab. Uh, and then they have Redis as well. Heroku Redis. Interesting. All right. All right. So theoretically, what we could, what we could, um, what I'm hoping that we could do is we could make a button that says, okay, deploy to Heroku. Then, 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 then. Let me just, let me just close out of a bunch of these because I have a feeling you can do. So with Heroku Redis, you could just do the process environment variable Redis URL. Because when you when you get 
Heroku to say, just add on Redis, they automatically set up the URL and what the URL will be for this because they already have your username and password. They set it up in your account's name. So if we do this and we do, uh, let me just make sure it's the same with uh, Heroku, MLab, uh, Node. Adding MLab as a Heroku add-on. Create MLab, connecting your connection URI, MongoDB URI. Yeah, and it gives you the freaking URI. Are you serious? Connecting your MongoDB instance. I think it is as simple as literally the MongoDB URI environment variable. Are you serious? This is really fucking cool. So theoretically, you do you can do this in one click if we can set this up correctly. So you want to know what that means, gents? It means we are going to try. We are going to try to figure this out in one click. All right, let me think of how we're going to do this. All right, let me, let's see what we got in this config file that we need, that we need to set up, like absolutely positively need to set up. Uh, so the first would, the, would be the MongoDB. All right, MV Mongo is what I have this as. But from what they're saying, we can change this to this. Ooh, ooh. We can change it to this. All right, right now I'm gonna put it back because I want to test it out. So here's here's what I'm talking about, by the way, just so we're all on the same page. Okay. Okay. Deploy to a Roku button has been around for a while. Okay, pretty much you have this deploy to Heroku button on your GitHub. And because we have everything built for Heroku already, we can make um, a deploy to Heroku button where it's kind of like this. So it nodes it's a Node.js application. It, right here it's a bare bones Node.js app and they have what this is built off of, okay? Um, and theoretically, we could make this for people in the RPG Maker community where literally all they have to do is click a button. It'll give them the Redis. It'll give them the Mongo, the MLab Mongo account. It'll give them the Heroku account, the free account. And they have everything already enabled. So literally, one click, set up your account, go. Install the things on your client side and go which would be really, really freaking cool. Um, so that's, that's the game plan. Let's see, how, let's see how brutal this is to do, because <laughs> I have not done this. Uh, so let's, uh, let's try this. Uh, so Heroku, uh, to Heroku button. There we go. OK, so what do we need? Requirements. Uh, this button is well suited for use of readme files and intended to serve as a replacement for the list of manual steps typically required to configure an app. Sounds good to me. This document describes the requirements the apps use must require uh, basic requirements for creating a button. App have a valid app.json file in its root directory. Okay. Uh, I do know that I do not have said app.json file in this thing right here. I don't 
Let's see one. Okay, so we're gonna add it. App.json. Okay. There are no specific tools required to create an app.json. The app.json schema has no requests required fields, but such fields such as name, description, logo are recommended as they provide helpful context to users and give your app a distinct identity. Okay. Let's copy this and kind of do what we need to do. Okay. MV online. Uh, uh, description. Um, uh, I have no idea what to put. Okay, repository. The repository is pretty simple. Now let me just go back up. I'm pretty sure it's just this. Which might get a little hairy considering we are on version. We're in a development branch. Yeah. Hugo, honestly, that was the other thing that I was considering doing was doing Docker containers. Um, I, I explained earlier in the video why I did not want to do Docker containers right at the second. Uh, it is a lot more complicated to do uh, Mongo instances. It's a lot more complicated to do um, clustering on a Docker container. Um, I'm not opposed to it. It's just not as it's not as point and click um, and I am not nearly as familiar with Docker as I should be to do that. Um, if somebody wants to make a bare bones build with what I have and make a Docker container, I'll be glad to test it. But it's, it's not something I have the time to really delve into and really make uh, production level ready, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, so, logo, uh, I have no idea what the hell this is. Uh, I don't like that at all. I don't think I need a logo. I'm going to keep no logo there. Node express. Uh, be online. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Um, did it say that I needed one? <laughs> Testing the app.json. Uh, adding a Heroku button. Hold on a second. Explicit parameter. Using a custom Git branch. Well, all right. Let me let me think about this. Uh, do we want to just put a pull request to the? Do we just want to do a release? Um. You want to want you want to want. Let's let's follow this. Let's try to get this working, um, and then we can worry about that kind of stuff. All right, testing the app.json. Now that you've created an app.json and add to the app's repo, there are a few ways to test that it is valid and that your app can be successfully deployed. You can validate and deploy using the CLI. Or use a web browser to deploy Heroku's new dashboard. Okay, so let's add this to our repo. Uh, so this is app.json for Heroku build. Push that up to the development. Copy our branch name. 
And now... Alright, so now we want to test it. We don't want to do that. We want to take that out. We want to do... This. So we do this. Uh, no app.json located in the URL you provided. Womp. Even though we have an app.json. Hmm. Oh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Time child JSON in the project root directory. All right, we'll keep the logo there. Push that on up. We see that, we see that, we see that. I'll reload. Hmm. Okay. Why? Hmm. Perplexing. Expect master to work. Huh. Am I just going crazy? App dot JSON. Hmm. He's setting up apps in the platform API. Uh, hold on. The source tarball, which contains the app.json. Have with a generated app. Uh, 
the hell? App dot JSON. I'm not going crazy. If you get up to master branch. Yeah, I think it's because we just don't have it in the master branch. All right, let's, um, yeah, let's merge into master. Most, mostly everything's working. Let's do it. I'm just going to create a pull request real quick. You can't see it on where I'm pushing it. Um, all right. All right. A lot has been changed. Mostly the server. And a lot of files I moved around, which is why you get a lot of this kind of stuff. Server.package.json How can I resolve conflicts? Why you play with me? All right, we're just going to do this the hard way. We are going to do this here because this makes our lives much easier. What? This look right. Something's getting fucked up on my end. Hold on. Docketio 2.2.0, that's correct. Docketio Redis, that's correct. Okay, no mail, sticky sessions, passport, this all looks good. I'm more concerned about server and stuff like that. And this is getting deleted, which is fine. That's fine. And server DS is getting deleted, that's fine. Rock file. All right, good luck everyone else. Let's push it. Let's push it, push it, push it. Merged. Um, why was 
does this not push? It was pushed a minute ago, but I do not see anything updated a minute ago. Oh. Well, everything seems to be here, so I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna argue. It works, it's the 39 minutes ago, whatever. Yeah, I'm just going with it. Okay, so now... Work. There we go. Imagine that. It fucking works. L little things about Heroku that I can't stand. Okay. So here... Mm, do I want to add it and test it right now? Or do I want to try to add... um? MLab and Redis right now. Um, let's try to add MLab and Redis. I mean, if it fucking works, it fucking works. I'm I'm gonna go with it. All right. So not the proc file. It's the app.json that I believe we need to need to do. Um, forgive me on this. <laughs> We're all trying to figure this out. So this is the, what we need for the button. Okay. And let's, all right. So let's update the readme. <laughs> Sorry guys. I'm like all over the place here. So deploy to Heroku here. I believe it's just as simple as that. And then we can come up here, copy that. Throw that in there. I'm pretty positive it's just that simple. Um. Let's try this. And we redo this. Well, would you look at that? Right. If we go back. Ah, ah. Kill me. Oh, uh, master. Yeah, yeah. So deploy to Heroku. Look at that. Pretty fucking cool. All right, I definitely want to put it somewhere a little bit, probably down here, but um, at least we have it there. It works. Now we should actually make sure it works. Um, Cause then we're gonna do stuff like this. My apologies guys, I am all over the place tonight. Uh, I hope you guys are liking this um, because I'm off. I'm feeling it. It's already 10 o'clock, but I feel like we're on a roll. I don't want to stop, but I'm going to have to because I have that magical place called work in the morning that I have to get to. Um, all right, let's see if we can bang out a couple of things. Let, let, let's just test this first. So let's open this in a new tab. Let's just make sure it works. So if, if I go uh, test and VNL, yeah, uh, play app. All 
That's fucking cool. I mean, shit. it's installed on a free one. Open app. Application error. Okay, so this is important. So we can do something called, yeah, let me just get it all set up here. Uh, yeah. Let's quit out of this. So you can do something called uh, Heroku logs uh, tail and you can see what's going on and test MV Nell is the name of my app. So test MV Nell. And I can see what the hell is going on with my thing. They change from starting. All right, hold on. Uh, I don't know. Roku restart. And then you can specify the app. Uh, what was it? MV, uh, test MV now. Oh yeah, pick a name that uh, works, by the way, for you. <laughs> that you can remember. Yeah, it just doesn't like it. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, so yeah. You know, error connection refused over here and over there. Okay. So, let's kill this Go to the sections. Let's delete the app. Okay. So now we deleted. Okay. So it, it did run and it ran correctly to the point where it's failing because we don't have Redis configured correctly, which is fair. Okay, that's fair. Normally, I would then tell you to go into your configuration and set up this um, the MV Mongo, the MV Redis host, Redis port, Redis password. But apparently, they told us that there's a different way of doing it, which we're going to try. So let, let's let's try this. This this should be fun. I'm actually kind of looking forward to this. Um, this Redis.url. So here, hold on, hold on. Ooh. If we come back to server, where are you, Redis? Ooh, we might have to get sneaky with this. Uh, shit. What is this risk? Hmm. Hmm. All right, yeah, I should be able to just push this. Not create a client, what the fuck? Should be able to do this. We're gonna try it. We are going to try it. 
So that's the Redis URL. And then there's a Mongo URI. Let's try this. The worst that happens. It all goes to shit. I'm done with that. All right, so we're gonna do this to test. Um, so I might have to revert this. It's fine. Uh, now we want to add provisions to app. Ah, sorry about this, guys. Um... All right, we, ooh, all add-ons. Okay, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. As uh, just bring us back here, fuck. Ah. Uh. Boo, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is even cooler. This is even cooler. So apparently you can... <laughs> Set up review apps. I don't know if this is what I want. No, that's not what I want. Sorry about this, guys. Gonna be going back and forth a little bit, add-ons. Okay. Let's grab a few of these. So let's, fuck it, let's just throw it in there. App.json. Okay, we don't want open Redis, but what do we want? What is it gonna be called? Um, uh, the first one we wanna do is MLab. Okay, so you figure. You figure we'll do MongoLab. But we don't want shared single, that shared cluster. Don't want that. Uh, you can find a complete list, list of plans in this catalog. Uh, what? Oh, oh, this is all I'm lab. Okay, custom run time sandbox. Mongo lab sandbox. 
Nice, 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 nice. So I believe we can just take this. We can do this. We can do that. I believe if I'm reading this correctly, which may not be the case. We just do that. And then we don't want to do open Redis. So now. So that's Mongo Lab Sandbox as Mongo. All right, so that's M Lab. So now let's do. Um, what was the other one? <laughs> uh, the other one was Redis. Roku Redis. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Hobby Dev. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We do this. And we do kind of what we did here. Right, and instead of MV Mongo, we do MV Redis Host. Give it a shot, man. What do we got to lose? What do we got to lose? All right, so. This might not work just because of the way um, this is done. Um, I'm trying to think of how we can test it. I'll think about that as we go. Um, don't want that anymore. Okay, so we pushed. Push, let's push, push, push. Uh, 20 seconds ago. Okay, so the app.json is updated. We are going to open this in a new tab. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Money. Money, money, money. All right, so. On the test. Deploy. See if that fucking works. I will be shitting bricks if this fucking works. It's configuring. It's thinking. Ah, oh, victory! Victory! Oh, come on, baby. Fuck with me. Deployed. You? Give it a sec. It just spawned. It'll take a little bit. Uh, come on. So close. So close. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. This is good. This looks like it's. Yeah, let's see if we can just reboot. Sometimes you just need to reboot when it first starts up. This is totally normal. More res I don't want to restart all dinos. 
Roku we start and we want to restart the app uh, nail and test starting Hmm. Redis connection to one two seven. Um, I wonder. I'm gonna delete this app anyway, so post URL. Is that what I put in the JSON? MV Mongo URI. Well, you see, this is why. This is why you suck. This is why you suck. This is why you fucking suck. So if I do this, and I do. This. Uh, update. Update environment variables. Push. Push, 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 push. Because slightly different commands. Um, and I should. Now I'm just going to have to. Okay. So now I'm going to have to update the server, but it's not going to be through the button. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm going to do get push Heroku. No, 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 I want to add that remote again. That session up in a thing. The fuck is this thing? Fuck. <laughs> it's the problem when you have so much shit around. Um, uh, change broker remote. Here we go, here we go, here we go. This is what I want. Uh, what the hell is the name of this? Uh, Nell MV test. Perfect. And then we want to get push. Push origin. Mister. It shouldn't be up to date. Uh, what did I change? I changed this. It is not the same. Oh, because I pushed to origin. Jesus. Roku. Master. Mister. Mister. Oh my goodness. Alright, build the dependencies. Caching build. Pruning dev dependencies. Fucking compress. Build, bitch, build. Build succeeded. Yeah. Team America. Here to save the world, yeah. All right. The last test. Just to make sure it all works. Uh, let's do this. Let's get rid. Let's get rid of pretty much all of these damn windows. All right. Cool, cool. So let's take this. Come in here. Ah. Once again, this should work just fine. 
Now, granted, there is something I realized. Um, I won't be able to sign in, and I just realized why. Because uh, this is a brand new Mongo instance. Which is fair enough. Shit. Add. Shit, 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 shit. Ah, but it at least should connect. Yeah, so this won't work, which is fine. This is what I expect. Four, four, not found though, is not what I want to say. Oh, because it's a slash slash login. Hold on. One momento. Got to take off that last little bit on the end. Now it should work. It'll tell me it'll still fail, which is fine. Uh, which is fine. Invalid username. Invalid username means it's actually hitting the uh, the thing. So if I come in here and I try to put in like a you know a submit. It's gonna say check your email for the activation link. Now, once again, I did not hook up the email server, which I highly doubt if Heroku has some sort of email telling us. But I am pretty damn happy. I mean, we have gotten to a point where we can deploy everything at once to Heroku and I mean, what do we need to hook up? We need to hook up email. So email is not a point and click, and that's pretty obvious. I can't think of a way that it would be. I'm I, actually, I, I will look at Heroku and see if it has any sort of um, yeah. Let's let's look. Add-ons, uh, email. Real email? I have no idea what you are. We're gonna find out what real email is. Because if it can work with Node.js, we just might fucking use it. Uh, reduce bounce emails and errors by validating emails against MX records. I have no idea. Yeah, I think that's gonna help. What else do we got? Email. Real email. Yeah, this is a much easier way. Fixing typos, fax response time. Yeah, higher quality email signups. Nah, that's not what we want. Email validation. Yeah, no. This isn't what we want. Womp. Unfortunately, they do not have a simple email service. Ah, sad. So we still have to use Node Mailer to kind of get what we need to done. But hey, I can dream. Uh, maybe there is an easier way out there. I haven't really looked, uh, but. For right this second, we'll keep Node Mailer, and it is still part of the process that we have to set up. Um, besides that, I don't think there's much else that we actually need to set up. Hmm. This host URL. Here, here, here. I got this. I got this. So host URL. No, 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 it was definitely host. And then...
There we go. So if this MV Redis host URL is not set up, it'll look in that Redis connection. Okay. Hmm. I don't think there's anything else that needs to be added to right this second. All right, so let, let's wrap this up in that note. So not working. Um, I wouldn't say Hero so there's only one caveat to the Heroku build uh, that we need to figure out and that is um, sending emails is still a problem but everything else is <laughs> I mean everything else works beautifully I did not know that there was an MLab integration where you could just get the free sandbox right along with it and it gives you the URI, so I mean you can connect to the URI. So, so what I mean by that is, uh, and I'm gonna delete mine right after this, so I really don't care. Um, if I go into my settings and I reveal my config vars, right? This is to get into my MLab, right? So I could use something like Robo3T, which is uh, uh, the um, you can connect your database with it. It's just a uh, uh, a database viewer if you will it's just a GUI to allow you to connect to your database um, you can you know it allows you to get into your MongoDB same thing with your Redis there's Redis GUIs out there that you can use to see the key store values and see how much room you have left and that kind of thing um, yeah, this is really cool this is really freaking cool um, it automatically makes it for you. You don't have to even have to. It it just saves quite a few clicks, and quite a few headaches of setting this up. Um, this is going to be really really nice for the community. Um, I'm going to spend the next couple days cleaning this up dramatically, uh, making a lot of sense with the documentation. I have a few things that I got to kind of clean up and and make pretty pretty and nice nice. But the majority is working. The only things that aren't working is the cloud save and the and cloud save is more for version um, 1.6. So I mean everything beyond that. I know it works in 1.5, uh, and I updated it on Project Six a while ago. So I might look into that and see how I did that, which might make um, I might come out with improvements for cloud save. But I, I think now we're at a point. There might be one more week of cleanup, but I think beyond next week, um, going forward, now we can start attacking some of the feature requests. Now we can start attacking some of the um, some of the other issues that are on the plate. Now that we know that this works, uh, I'm actually going to come out with uh, now that I have this all kind of working and ready to go and. Uh, it's it's really nice now um i should probably maybe next i'm debating next week if we should make a nice clean video on i mean tonight was kind of a clean video on how to start everything from scratch everything seems a little bit a lot cleaner in general um yeah let me fix the little things that i need to fix here uh, the font awesome, the uh, update the readmes, the client documentation for cloud save, like little things that just need to be updated anyway. Let me update them. That way we're not we're not bogged down by this. Uh, if you guys have anything that you want to add or you know talk about for the next couple minutes, we can totally do so. But I think we're at a good we're at a good point to kind of leave it for the night. Uh, I'm gonna spend the next week kind of cleaning all this up. Uh, the Heroku deploy stuff is really um, something I gotta mess with anyway. And I am gonna sit here and while I'm doing that, while you guys are typing in furiously, I am going to delete this application because I want to delete it. Delete. And we're done. So, pretty cool. I mean, it works be beautifully. I mean, uh, the next the next step for me would definitely be Docker containers, because I mean Docker. For those who aren't familiar, Docker allows you to. It doesn't matter what operating system you're running on. 
you can just deploy it. It's just a build file, essentially. So it's kind of how we did with Heroku, where we put in a bunch of configurations and it just works. Very, very, very similar in Docker. It's just a lot more technically complex. You gotta expose certain ports, you gotta build certain things off of each other, then you gotta, especially with how we're building it, then we gotta deal with all these environment variables and their different containers that handle different environment variables. It's not as straightforward as Heroku. I wish it was. Uh, if we were doing something simple like a basic express app, it would definitely be worth it. Uh, but with Socket.io, multiple Socket.io, with Redis in between and everything else, I mean, I know how I would structure it, but the actual YAML file and how to get that rolling, I mean, there's a lot that needs to be learned in there um, that I just don't know off the top of my head. It is a good project. I might go for it, uh, but I might need help to, to get that rolling a little bit more. Uh, but at least we have an option for free which is very important and very useful for the community. It's not only free, because you can do it on your computer for free, but it allows you to connect to other people for free. Okay, I've gotten a lot of requests for people to who want to put it on a server somewhere, and they just they don't want to deal with AWS, they don't want to deal with anything else. So Heroku is really easy to get up and running and get it there, and now it is literally the click of a button. Uh, the only thing that you will have to deal with is the um, the mail system, like I was saying. So in here, uh, the mail from, the MV mail from, you're still gonna have to do. So you could either update it in here and push it to your Heroku Git, or you can come in here and your mail from, you can add to your, um, your config vars and you can add your uh, similar to this and I've done other videos specifically for this node mailer setup um, so I can point you in the right direction if you ask me on my discord I'll send you a link to that all right uh, so what's the next step after everything's clean up and all the features are done um, I can guarantee the features will never be done, ever. Uh, if all the features are done, then I'm done. I can die a happy man. It'll never be done. There is no such thing as done. I'd be surprised. Uh, there will always be something else. You know, I remember starting with RPG Maker VX almost, it feels like, 10 years ago. Uh, there is no shortage of people who want plugins. Uh, same kind of concept. It, it'll never end. So, uh, I hope I stay in it for a little while. But my ultimate goal is to find other people who really, really like this and who get interested in it and take it over. Um, not, not wrestle it away from me by any stretch of the imagination, but who just are into RPG Maker way more than I am and who like this stuff. It's bound to be one other person out there. So, but the point is I want someone who who doesn't want to write this from the beginning and already has semi knowledge of this. And like I said, you know, we're we're one step closer. You know, having a one click button that pretty much sets up the entire freaking thing for you is it's damn good. It's really good. I'm really happy with where we're at tonight. All right, guys. I think I'm going to uh, to call it a day because I'm kind of rambling and going around in circles. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation, by all means, I'll be on Discord for probably another half an hour or so, and then I'll probably get to bed. Um, if you have any questions, once again, Discord channel. I'm also going to suggest if you have issues... Um, if you have similar issues, uh, or or if you have any issues with this new system that I don't know about, any bugs, uh, any issues, please do not comment on YouTube. I do not see them. I don't look at them. I don't have time. Uh, put it on GitHub. I will get to them eventually. Uh, it might take a while, but I will get to them. Okay? So GitHub is the best place to put issues. Uh, other people can see them a lot easier. You can also post in Discord. Don't direct message me. Put it in the general channel. 
There are other people who have had similar issues, I can guarantee you. So they can help you, I can help you, and we're good to go. Alrighty, uh, with that, later, Game Makers.